Hi guys, it's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back checking out what I am up to today. And yes, today I am bringing you another thrift haul and makeover. It, we have been blessed lately that there's been a lot of items for sale in my local thrift store. So this thrift haul is all going every day. Um, and I have to admit to you that sometimes I do go twice a day just because a lot of times Chris would like to go or one of my kids want to go. So heck yeah, it's not even 10 minutes away from our house, you guys. So, and you know, I'm not the only one that does that. The, um, the ladies know that those of us that resell and make things over, so they're used to seeing us and they, you know, maybe give us a hard time. But yeah, you need inventory. You need to find things. The, our stock in our local Goodwill is always changing, so you have to check back often. So yes, this is all from my local Goodwill. Um, I have to take that back. I did go out. Um, we did go pick up a piece of furniture off a marketplace and I think we stopped to buy one that was right outside of town, but I did not have to travel far to get anything. So let's get into this haul. I'm super excited. So first of all, look at this. Now I have one of these carved baskets, had it for years. It was a gift. Um, the hard thing about these is, and I know from my own experience, remembering to oil it, which is so funny that, you know, you're like, yeah, because it dries out and it cracks. Yes, and mine had started a crack. Um, I'm sorry, but I know when things are needy, who remembers to do this, to oil a piece of wood? And they're expensive. But I know that I should be able to take some of the Starbond black glue and make that look like epoxy to fit fix that and then I'll give it a good cleaning, a good oiling. Um, yes, these are, these were expensive. The, I, um, I think the one, I know the one that I got as a gift that's twice the size of this, um, was sold here locally at a Hallmark store, which it was an amazing Hallmark store. So she had the, the best stuff in there. I do miss her. They retired and had to close, but this was a great find and I know that I can fix it or accentuate it and make it the crack look like it's supposed to be there. Now this was on that little trip. Um, this was the community thrift. Oh, look at it. I think it's a sheep, sheep maybe. <laughs> I'm not really sure, but it's a piece of pottery. Um, it's not signed, but so far the pottery has still been selling really well for me. I'm sorry that my ring light um, is picking it up no matter where I go. It, there's like no rhyme or reason. If I do a thrift haul too late in the day, then I have too much sun. And then if I do it early in the morning, I have to turn all the lights on to get lights for it. I just, I'll figure it out guys. And then my other pottery piece find that, that was a red tag. I'm so, they're all under $5. <laughs> they code like that. And I can never remember what they are. And then this one, look at two twenty nine. It's a little pottery kitty cat. Oh, now at first I thought the ears was chipped, but no, they were made so you saw, still saw some of this. So, oh my gosh, he's so sweet, so sweet. Definitely will fit into my little pottery collection. I have now. I went from one um, shelving unit of pottery to two shelving units of pottery. So. And I've been selling it. So yeah, well, as long as it's still selling, I'll still pick it up. And then this pretty, this was $3.29. Oh my gosh, it's a sea turtle. Just a little dangly. It's got one of those nice bells at the end of it. I might have left it alone. I like sea turtles. I like those types of bells. So definitely we have a lot of lake cottages here. Somebody would be happy to pick this up. And I'd probably resell sell this for $10, $12. I know people want me to say that. It's so hard for, I, my mind's always going faster um, onto my next thing before I'm totally thinking of that. So. And for $1.29, I don't pass up stars. They sell no matter what, even though this one is a puffy one. We're gonna call it puffy. Yeah, this still will sell. Still people could add this into their decor. Um, I actually, I think I would keep this, that rust color. It's still, it's in great shape. 
people are still decorating with the rust, so I would do this one as is. This was $3.39. Um, it has a tag, so it's, I don't know if that was from Arizona, but I think it's a frog is what Chris thought. What's your guesstimate on it? Um, but I just, I like the shape. I like that it had so that interest in it. So yeah, so it actually has holes. So like you, if you put flowers in there, the water could get through it, I think, I think. I, I'm guessing, I'm, <laughs> I'm guessing. So, but I like the colors and I like that it was pottery. Now this was kind of on the dirty side but you stick it in a plant, but look at that butterfly. It almost reminds me of Mother, the Mother of the Pearl, Mother Pearl. Um, and then this was, this is glass, blown glass. Just beautiful. So yeah, I, who cares that it's rusty? You can stick it back in dirt. That is beautiful, beautiful. This one was 229 also. Just so much character in one little butterfly. Why we're going along the lines of butterflies for two pieces for three twenty nine. They are cast iron butterflies. Nothing but a bath for these two. Loved, loved that, and they actually even have um, hangers on the back. Oh, even better. So I won't do anything to this black cast iron. I thought they were beautiful. So you all know that I love white. So when I saw this pair for $3.29, I love the simplicity, the contemporary kind of look of them. I'm thinking llamas. What do you think? The long necks make me want to think of giraffes, but I think llama. <laughs> I think llamas, but just a set they're white nice little shelf sitters contemporary definitely so these are hand painted they're that oval oh my goodness so i have to tip them this way to get that ring light, light not to show but just beautiful so like this is the kind of stuff um hand painted signed that i would have to pass up because i don't think anybody would even stop in my black and white booth to find vintage items like this. So these are the kind of things that I will be listing on eBay. Then if they don't sell, then we can put them in the booth. But $4.29 for some beautiful, that curved glass. I know I watched, do y'all watch the Crazy Lamp Lady? I love learning from her. She is so, Jocelyn is so knowledgeable. Um, so she definitely has my eye looking at and I watched her even before I started YouTube. I just am amazed with her knowledge. So then this bag of goodies was $3.29. I don't even know what was in it, but I am a sucker when it comes to glass beads. Oh my goodness. I definitely, if you watch my Christmas, I have a lot of vintage glass beads in clear, and then I have them in red. So I definitely love this bronzy gold color. Yep, they are heavy. They're heavy, they're beautiful. They're on an aged wire. I don't know how old they are. They made new to look old, but this is something I would keep for my myself. I definitely love old glass bead garland like this. So for $8.29, I ran across a pair of cutting boards. Now I'm not necessarily a fan of the handles, but they're in great shape. They're stamped with who um, made them. So, and I don't know if they've ever even been used. I don't see any scratches. I don't see any. Um, so I'll probably just resell these as is. I would say I'd probably sell them separately. Um, 12 and 16 maybe I think I'd go um, and then if they sat for a long time I could see if Chris could round these off and match that pattern I think people would this kind of has more of the nautical like I'm going to be um, scaling fish <laughs> so um, so we'll see you know you always put it in the booth first see if they sell and if they don't sell you can always come home and tweak it a little bit 
Now the enamel bath got me on <laughs> this. I can see somebody having this in their bathroom. It's nice as is. So this was $3.29. I'd probably do $9 on it in my booth. I think somebody would be happy to find this to have in their bathroom. So, and we have a lot of, I've said that before, we have a lot of lake cottages. So there's a lot of staging going on, a lot of rentals. So yeah. People do. I have had people actually, when I've been in their stocking, that I've bought our stuff just to stage houses with. So, okay. Uh, hey, it's sold. It doesn't, I don't care what you're doing with it afterwards. So for $4.29, I picked up another old box. Oh, I, ah. so I just like the, I like the patina of old boxes. I'm not going to paint them. So I, I probably will still keep this one for myself. I believe, nope, this is not something, something I bought had the key in it still, but this, this was not, we'll, we'll come across it when we come across it. But yeah, this one, I, yeah, I'll keep for myself. And then here we're gonna have that same situation with the ring light glare. So for, oh, so if I tip them this way, so these are hand drawn prints and oh my gosh, so it's from a Florida. So I know these were less than six bucks. There's two of them. So nothing to do with these two. They say Banyan Tree, Thomas Edison's home. Can I get that closer so you can see it? Is that, does that, hopefully that was focusing in. And then this one says Thomas Edison's home, Fort Myer, Florida. With the signature that I can't read, but the black and white got me. So usually if, when I put these like in our booth, I would do 10 to $12 a piece for them. I think they're just nice. They're nice as is, beautiful. Now this little guy I thought was super cute for $2.29. Nice bright green. We got some berries on there. We got some rusty stars. I will just clean this up and sell this as is. I don't I don't do like a tax license or anything, so I can't buy wholesale greenery. So happy when I can find pieces that I actually would I would decorate with and I'd put into my booth. So then so then there were these. There's two of them. They were $6.29. Um, I guess they had them like this, and this is what attracted me. I thought, okay, vases. Love that. Let's paint these up. I'm not really a fan necessarily of um I it's just a little too much. But I guess when I, there's a tag inside <laughs> that read, watch your candles when they're burning. And I, that, I really don't like them as candlesticks personally. As decorative shelf sitting vases in some black and maybe some distressing. It's just a lot of contemporary going on there. I don't know who made them. The tag just says, watch your candles. But yeah, I'm definitely going to paint these up. Um, yeah. So yeah, I will, I'll, I'll advertise them as vases and not for as candlesticks. <laughs> now this was $3.29. I love little trays like this. This will get a black paint job for sure. Um, I usually get about nine. So that's why it's only getting black because <laughs> that'll be easier and a little bit of distressing. Just update from that primitive burgundy color. Uh, okay. And then we found this cookie jar. Looks like a mason jar. It was $6.29. There's nothing we can do about prices, guys. Remember that. It is what it is. We can't complain. You can't. I'm a reseller. This is my life. I have to pay the price. And unfortunately, then you have to put it onto your customer. So if it raised a couple bucks, then I have to raise a couple bucks. So, but it's got a great seal on it still. So I would resell this one just as is. Um, share. Oh, uh, so it was Cheryl's cookies. I don't know um, if any of you have ever bought Cheryl's cookies. Cheryl's cookies um, is a delivery cookie. Ooh, yummy. <laughs> I've actually sent them to people. They're pre-wrapped cookie, individually wrapped. So they're always fresh. There's a ton of designs. Let me do an advertisement because I have sent them. I have received Cheryl's cookies. I think F 
the FTD Floors Company now owns Cheryl's Cookies. Um, long story short, a gentleman that his second wife came into our salon, she was Cheryl's Cookies. <laughs> I believe that's how it goes. So yeah, so that's how I got to know about Cheryl's Cookies, but then yes, anyway. So yes, Cheryl's cookies are yummy. Look them up. If you need a gift to, if you need a gift to send somebody, whoo, yay! You can put those in your pantry since have a midnight stand. <laughs> so this, I know this is a new piece. Um, Six twenty nine is a Hobby Lobby piece. It says, "Hey y'all," which is really funny because they had another big palette looking type that said Southerner, which is funny because. We're Michigan, so we're not Southern now. We're Southern Michigan, but um, I like the hey y'all because I do actually say that quite a bit. So yeah, so I would probably just resell this. Take the always take your tags off, guys. But so look at this galvanized metal stars, nice candles. Oh my goodness, no wording, perfect. I will probably keep this for the $6.29 price for myself. Um, it looked like it was a $12.99 back in the time that it was sold. I don't know what was sold in it, but I definitely can see this in my garden area. I love that a couple pots in there. I love galvanized. So hopefully now that we have our, I get to do a garden tour, tour with you. I love the garden guys. So for $4.29, I found this Swirly Faith. Oh, love this, love this. Now I just recently did one that was family, it sold. I've done eat ones that have been this material just by distressing those edges. Um, this one could use a fresh paint job. There are more smudges than are just on the little edges. So definitely love, I like, I still like pieces like this, but you know, we're women and we change after our decor and what we did one time, we want to do totally opposite. So not that it goes out of style, it just, we wanted to change our decor. So I don't know, when I'm looking for Afghans, I always do look for aprons too. Love this fun apron. It's a dollar ninety nine. It has no stains. I will wash it up. I will iron it. And I sell, um, I sell aprons for $14.95. So, yep, that's just my going price for aprons. I usually am able to pick them up. I make sure they're in great, perfect condition. Wash them, iron them. Um, once in a while, I do find them at Dollar General or I do find them out at other stores for a reasonable price. But I, they sell. So, I was happy to find this fun spring color. Now this was one of those where I was at the right place at the right time because I walked in and then they were carrying this out. <laughs> Look at this stained glass, $5.29. There is a crack here guys, um, but I don't think that distracts from this beauty at all. Oh my goodness. I have picked up and sold stained glass before. Not This is probably the largest piece I've ever picked up. Five. Oh, I got set down. It's heavy. Um, beautiful, beautiful. So I'll probably um, do a little research before I pop it on. Even with that one broken, I don't think that's going to make much of a difference. Somebody's going to be very happy that red just pops right out. So this is not something I'd want to sh ship. I want to sell it in her booth. And every once in a while, I have a bag or a purse that catches my eye. Now, this is a Vera Bradley, I believe, $3.99. The red, the black, the white. I sell those standing paltry coat racks. Um, I usually always have one or two, in, one in each booth. I don't ever pass them up when I'm thrifting. Uh, it's not really a video I show that. I've shown them when we've done made up makeovers, but it's a hall tree. <laughs> How exciting can you make it? But I like to hang stuff on it, like bags. And I just sold a 31 dandelion bag and um, other bags. So I'm down to that one that I did that I put the grain sack in the chicken. It's still there. Nobody's bought it. 
it, but it's okay. It gives you an idea that that's uh you don't pass up that little tree. And then the other one in the other booth, when I usually have aprons hanging from that one. So yeah, I like to pick up bags that would are pleasing to what our booth is. So long long story short on um why I have a purse. So then this this guy was another um, community thrift. I think it was a dollar ninety nine. It's an old, old gallon with the lid that's rusty. I would leave. I'm gonna leave this as is. Um, I have one on one of my. If you watched my decorate with me, I have a older one that is still clear. It had the lid. Um, I think it's from 1918. So no, no, I'm leaving this as is. I like the lid. It could be wine. I don't know, but. We have a lot of people that still decorate that way with the primitive farmhouse. And so, yep, just leave this one as is. Now, if it didn't have the lid um, on it, I would probably do something different and decorate it up or what have you. But nope, I'll leave it with that little rusty lid, lid and sell it as is in the mineral buildup at the bottom of it just as is so it looks aged and old. Now, I told myself I don't need any more trays. I don't, don't need any more trays, but then there was this one. <laughs> so this one was $7.29. Look at the size of this one. Nothing I have to do to it. It does have, yes, it does have a crack right there, but I don't think that detours from how beautiful this is. It's probably the same along the lines of that wooden bowl. Would, when they make stuff, needs to be oiled and then we use cleaning products which dry it out or the you know the heaters in our house dry it out and then it just cracks because it's usually wet when they're making these kind of things so that that just happens um I don't see any reason to try to fill that I think just leave it alone look at you can't even see it so I would just resell this as is I this big boy I'd probably start off with $32 to see how it how it sells so um, it just says pri privilege, privilege. I'm not sure, but yeah, I've never actually heard of that brand, but it's a thrift store. You never know what you're going to hear. Of. So for $7.29, I found a, I love to always have a globe in our booth. I know that probably seems weird, but they sell. So I usually do $28 on a size like this, just a basic I don't, I can't say that I look them up to see what they are as long as they look vintage and they're not glue, they're not broken. Um, yeah, so yep, I was happy to find that. Whoop, it looks like it needs to be put back together. I can, we can fix that. Um, that happens. But yeah, it, so yep, not a problem there. I love when I run across, the, I have a little globe in there right now. So Now this guy was 10, oh, let's see if I can get him in here. Oh. I have to move some stuff. So this was ten twenty nine. Definitely, definitely. I can look through here. <laughs> it's that um, primitive vibe. Just beautiful. Somebody will buy it, put some greenery on it, and I think they will be happy. See some distressing. I would probably sell a piece like that for about the thirty five dollar range and see how it sells. Always better to start off high, and if it sits too long, you can drop it down. Some of these pieces are rather large. So this, <laughs> this is a humongous, humongous frame, Urge. but it's, it's so hard to see. So it's skinny. So this one was $7.29. Now, I, usually I would put pallet wood or some beadboard and I decorate it up, but I think take this insert out. I can see somebody putting like, I think faith is too big, but putting a word um, in here or something else and using this as an accent behind like sticking other things inside here just because of how long and skinny it is. Now it's made to hang long, long ways but I always like to add another option so I'll put another hanger on the back. I will paint this up black and chalk paint this so we can bring out the beautiful details, do it that white color and then, yes, I will just sell a basic frame, which is something I can't say that I've never ever sold, just a basic frame. But that was my first thought, how somebody would love to run across a piece like this and build around it as an accent. Okay, so then this came out the same time as that stained glass. 
So it's a bird bath, 529. It needs to be fixed. So I don't know if I've ever done anything like that, but I'm always up to a good challenge. So I'll, I always do a little bit of research first, check out YouTube and what to do. Um, sunflower, yeah. So I may just even keep it for myself. I love to feed the birds. So well, I can't say that a bird bath ever stays with water, <laughs> water, but our little river pond, I love watching the birds um, drink and bathe from that. So this would just be a decorative. I wouldn't put any water in it. Plus our water here in Michigan is rusty, terrible on the outside. Yep, I found another bag of hardware. My poor husband's like, are you gonna resell it? I go, no, it was $4.29 for all this hardware, I know. Our cabinets are gonna fall because they have too much hardware in it, but it has detailed on it. So it has, I don't even know, a dozen or so. Then it also has some of the poles and all the screws are with it. So I can help myself for $4.29. So I have another bag of goodies to share with you all. Um, now I will share with you if my son wasn't working at the antique mall, I probably would have just like, yeah, passed him up. But he talks about Fenton glass all the time. So yes, the other morning when I was in early, waiting for paint to dry. It's usually when I go into our little Goodwill, I do something out in the shop and then I'm waiting for paint to dry. I'm at a standstill and so I go shop. <laughs> so yes, look at this hobnailed. I think I said that right because I'm not. This is out of my character. This is why I said I needed to open some type of an eBay store because yes, oh my gosh, beautiful. Nothing wrong with this. It just a beautiful piece of Fenton. But, but wait, there's more. So then, what did I can't remember what my son called this, but it's another piece of Fenton. Oh, shoot. Oh, he had me. He told me what it was, and I forgot what it was. But yet, look at the two pieces together. And it was funny because this one was staged weirdly with something else and then this one was staged weirdly. Um, but they were 620, this one, t the set was 629 and that one was 629. So, but yeah, you know, like, you're not always going to make a huge over profit on stuff, but selling little by little, it all adds up. So I was happy to find some fun. And I did actually pass up on a Hager vase that was really small. Um, it was really like that little cat I showed small, but they wanted four bucks for that. So I wasn't sure on the Hager vase and it was a sticker tag Hager vase, but I don't know. We'll see how this goes first, especially when it comes to glass items. <laughs> that is it for my haul video, um, but I do want to share um, before we get into the makeovers, one little quick thing. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, which I would love you to, please. Um, I did a story because I received this beautiful songbook. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. Um, it's a 1907 songbook. Um, it's in a totally different language because the lady who sent it to me is from Hungary. So... I am just, I can't even tell you. <laughs> so she, you know, my love of black Bibles, how I like to collect with them. Um, she thought I would definitely appreciate this one. So 1907, I think my old, oldest one is maybe 1914 or 1918. So yes, this definitely fits into my collection. I wanted to share that with you all. Not that I want you guys to send me a whole bunch of stuff, but when you've, when somebody feels the kindness to go above and beyond, because I can't imagine what shipping from Hungary it was to get to Michigan, US and United States. Just thank you so much. Um, I wanted to send you a thank you card, but I can't, we were having a hard time reading your address, but you know who you are and thank you so much. I 
from the bottom of my heart, I am overwhelmed with gratitude. I hope that you receive blessings a hundred times over for your kindness. So thank you so much for this. And, um, oh, I had it upside down. And my son did Google a little bit. Um, there was a page in here, a translator, that it was gifted to somebody. And then he passed away when, when he was 69. Um, I don't remember which page it was. I'm afraid to look at it too much. I don't want to destroy it. It has a, the neatest little clasp on it. So anyway, I just wanted to put that in before we get to our fun makeovers. So stay tuned. Right off the bat, let's get the crack on this bowl fixed. So just going to remember to remove the tags. I don't think there was any tag on the bottom of this, but just assessing that crack. So to get that the glue will not just fall through and go run them down, I'm going to put a piece of masking tape on top of a piece of masking tape, kind of making a plastic backer and the glue won't stick to the packing tape and it'll just stick to the wood. That way, as long as I get a good base of the glue down, it does look just like epoxy. If you watch anybody that does epoxy work, they actually use this Star Bond dark glue a lot when they've had air pockets or little divots in their black epoxy. What I'm doing here is I'm just putting a layer of the glue in and making sure that it's kind of getting into those little crevices, getting a good base. And then when I have enough that I think that it's plenty, I'm going to go ahead and use the accelerating spray, which dries it in 15 seconds. That way I have, it's kind of going to be like a bowl. I'm going to have to put a layer, let that dry, put another layer, let that dry until I filled the crack. And then when I've overfilled it by just a little bit, I'm going to end up having to sand it. So now all I need to do is now use some oil. So I'm using that same oil that I use on butcher blocks and the cutting board. And I'm actually going to over oil this, let that just soak it right in. And by morning when I look at it again, it will be perfect. <music> I was actually surprised in how much of that brown paint came off of this sunflower. All I did was just start to wash it and it just, actually my couch had a whole bunch of the little flakes on it, but the leaves themselves are on there good. It was that brown that just wasn't adhered very well. And so whatever's left, I tried to pick off, but I'm not gonna accidentally break the glass. So I'll just leave it as it is and blend. Since I'm keeping this piece for myself, I really want that sunflower to be more bold and see it from afar because I have an idea where I'd like to put it in my garden so as to be far off from our deck area. So I'm going to mix these two different types of browns, different colors of browns, kind of making how the, you know, it wouldn't be all one color anyway. So I'm just going to go in and dab a whole bunch of this cocoa bean and then mix some of that truffle in, just kind of giving it that variegated look. Now, I want, since you do see your brush strokes from the other side, that's why I'm going to just do the dabbing, kind of like it's the seeds. And since my paint was covering up more than the original paint, I went in with some pumpkin on some of the leaves, but then I had to, I don't know why I didn't video that, but you know, I just did some of the leaves and then I had to run to Walmart because I did not have any of the yellow paint. So this is maize. So I'm going to finish off the leaves with some maize. The reason for coloring it all in yellow was to make sure if I didn't, since I dabbed a lot of it and had some of the other brush strokes, I wanted to make sure that there was no clear glass showing, so I just did the whole thing in the yellow. But now I'm spraying some polycrylic with the hopes that this will last a season in Michigan. While my polycrylic is still wet, just in case it got any of it on that clear glass, I'm just taking a Clorox wipe and then quickly going around those edges and making sure that there's not that film from that polycrylic.
I know. I always say that I'm going to leave something rusty like the bottom of this. But you all know if you watch my channel regularly, you know I just could not do it. So, yep, I'm just taking some coarse grit, 80 grit sandpaper, why it's wet, trying to remove a lot of that clumped up rust and dirt on the bottom of this. It's minimal work, really, just to make it look pretty. Then here it is. I'm like, oh my gosh, it glows in the dark. Just happened to be walking into an area where it was dark and there it was a glow in. Oh, how cool is that? I already love the glass on this piece. So just a fresh coat of the Rust-Oleum paint and primer in the black. Guard that beautiful butterfly. Seal it in with some polycrylic and we are good to go. Nope, it is that imperfectly perfect, but... It's still, it looks a lot better when at least it's cleaned up. Now, I probably should not have picked this one up for the price and what I can resell it for, but these are such cute little trays, and this was such an easy flip. Just take the tags off, get it all cleaned off, fresh coat of paint on this, and then seal it in with some polycrylic. There's not even any sharp edges to distress on this piece. And then this piece is just the same. It's pretty easy, straightforward. Take off the tags, flip it over, get it cleaned off. Now, after it is good and dry, I am going in with my 360 Truco handheld sprayer. I have the ready to use black onyx and the flat sheen to spray this piece up. And then after that is dry, I'll seal it in with some Rust-Oleum clear coat. Now to distress this piece, I'm going to use my resources, or if you want to say cheat, I'm going to use my mouse sander for as much as I can to sand those edges. That just saves your hand. And then the little areas where I can't get to distress, I'll go in and hand sand with some 220 sandpaper. But I just like the way that the distressing makes the wording pop. these were a nice find a versatile piece that you can use for candlesticks or you can use for vases because I really thought they were vases so I'm just getting them cleaned up they're a little too goldy for me though I really like that aqua distressing on them so let's see if I can get these sprayed up black and reproduce something How many of you all watching have I spiked your interest with all these patinas? I am obsessed with using these patinas. I love looking in the thrift store, finding items that I can use, especially the rust one. Now I love layering them and I think that's what they're actually meant to do. So I'm just going in randomly with this first rust layering, just random spots. tell as it oxidizes how that what the color I put on it changes so the same thing is going to happen these two are going to mix and now this one is more of a that like, like textured paint it's really quite thick but as you know what rust does it plumps up so this is perfect I love layering the two together <music> Because the black doesn't necessarily show that reddish brown of the rust very well there's this one and oh probably the boldest color that I've ever used but once you kind of combine the two of them oh my goodness am I in love one of these patinas is you just keep working it until you love it so yep I don't want to cover up the original black I still want that to be shown and at two this 
bright blue color will kind of start to oxidize and change a little bit also. It's definitely in the eye of the beholder of what you think is finished. So I actually even went a little bit farther, did a little bit of the silver wax on top of it. I like that a little bit better. Or it looked beautiful as is. It's such a hard decision, but you, you know when you know when it's finished. So that's all I did was kind of dry brush just a little bit of that silver wax on, just blending it all together just in case there was any really huge clumps but i love how these turned out can i say that anymore probably if we don't love what we're doing what are we doing now i'm going to go ahead and spray it with a coat of polycrylic just to make sure everything is sealed in i think the waxes and the patina are good to go afterwards but i'm not positive so since i'm going to be reselling these i rather put some polycrylic on them Now usually a simple hammering of these inserts will just loosen up that nail and pop that right out. I am actually surprised that it was actually still in here. Then I'm going to go back into the frame and make sure that I get all those nails that are keeping that insert in place uh, removed. You know, I'm just that type of person that has to share every little step with you all. So now when it comes to painting this frame white, I want to go ahead. I sealed that black in with polycrylic. I want to be able to distress this piece, but I love mixing the chiffon in with a white linen that takes away that bright, bright white of that linen. And then the chiffon, a 50-50 ratio is like the perfect white it's like i love the kills paint and primer one that we use but you can't water distress it it takes a lot to distress those so being able to water distress on these beautiful details is why i have chosen to go with the chalk paint so yes the 50 50 ratio is beautiful after three coats of the white paint to get it to cover, now I'm taking some of the white paint off by water distressing it. Yes, I just want it to look aged. I want that detail to pop. So just a wet wipe and a dry cloth to take off the chalkiness left behind where I had wanted to see the black. I'm going to go back in after I water distress. I do let that paint dry. Now I'm going to seal that chalk paint in with some polycrylic. If you don't let it dry and you want crackly, yeah, go ahead and put some on. But I usually let it dry because if you do it while your paint could still be wet, it will crackle it. Now I like the black, but I just want to add a little bit more detail to these. The way it was previously painted, it just was too much paint on that detail. So they're not quite as popping as much as I'd like them to do. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of the silver wax and then just get some of those details and some of those areas of the frame that have been worn and broken just to add some more interest. And then I'm going to go also back in with the bluish green patina just to have it pop just a little bit of a tone also i just want to emphasize these little places a little bit more we just need to add something to hang this with on their wall so now it is complete
So now we have this primitive star window shelf type of thing. And yes, I, I my plan was just to keep it black. And so I was going to do repeat, repeat, repeat. Um, but then I'm like, I don't know, would I hang something black on my wall? So then I, after I got it all cleaned and sprayed up black and polycrylic, I'm like, oh, I don't know. I think I'm going to put some candle wax on it and paint it white. Yep, once I had it black, I just couldn't envision it hanging on the wall. So I'm just doing candle wax around all those little details. That's going to make it a little bit more chippy looking, a little bit more overly stressed to match the primitive look of this piece. took about three coats to cover this up with the same mixture of the Rust-Oleum chalk paint as I used on the frame. So now I'm just taking a scraping tool and just scraping off that candle wax, just leaving that black behind. This is giving it a little bit more of a primitive, definitely more chippy look. So now I'm just going in with some sand sandpaper on those. Inside of the stars are so rough, so raw, so hard to dust. I, it always bothers me. So I'm just going to make sure that I get those sand it nice and smooth and sand smooth the rest of the piece before sealing it in with some clear coat. And then this one too, I didn't even see anywhere that this one even had any previous hangers on it. Maybe they just set it on a table. So yep, this one's getting some hangers so that the new buyer can hang it also. I know that should have been my last piece and I am so sorry, but within showing you and working on this, I ran across this star shelf and I'm like, oh, if I'm gonna have one little star shelf, I want another little star shelf when I put them both in the booth together. So I'm like, oh, well, this will be easy. All I gotta do is clean it up and paint it. As you see, I'm hammering on it. Nope, nothing at the thrift store is ever just a paint job for me. So yes, that has some weird rounding on the top of it. So I don't know if it was that way or it was uh, kind of on the warped side or it had been dropped, but it was pulling away. So all I'm doing is hammering that top off and going to take the two screws around the back and I'm going to flip the board over so it's more straight. I had the little square head nails all taped off. That star has some wire in it that I had that all taped off. And I already know this video is running really long, but I wanted to share with you, it wasn't that terrible of a bend, but what it was causing is it to pull away from the two side corbel types. So I definitely was very noticeable for me. And I thought, you know, it's not that big of a dip that if I flip it over, it will look way better. So now I gotta take all the little nails that were in there and put it back together. just always finds the neatest tool. So this is a little pre-drilling so you can screw in for your hanging systems, but it makes it completely centered and fits into the hole where you're, he was going to put the screw. So that's what he was pre-drilling all the holes with. So as always,
Ladies, thank you for watching today's video and give me a comment of what item I found was your favorite or even the ones that I made over. And don't forget to start checking out our eBay store. I'll link it down below. I believe you can follow it so you can see when we've added new items. And yes, it's only going to be a three day auction just so we can offer it to you um, to buy if you're if you want to. And that we can also, if it doesn't sell in three days, we can put it in our booth and try to sell it another way. So again, thanks for watching today's video, guys. And as always, thank you for being part of our YouTube family. And if you're new and you're checking out our content for the first time, thank you so much. And you want to become part of our YouTube family, just hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys. And you can see what I'm up to. Bye!